Hello, I'm Luis, and I'm going to try to give you 15 Figma tips and tricks in under 10 minutes. Let's see. The first thing you notice here is my canvas has a weird color that I customized. So if you click on nothing, you click on the canvas, you have here the background property. And here's where you can change the background of everything. You can put anything you want. And the good thing is that this is different from page to page. So if I create here a few pages, you see it's taking the color of the first page, but I can change it again. And I say, okay, this one I want it like this. And the previous ones have the original color. The next tip is for presenting or for showing what you have on the screen is to hide the whole UI. So if you right click on anywhere on the canvas, you have here this shortcut called show hide UI. And you see everything disappears. This makes it super easy to present. And it has a shortcut, of course, control backslash and in Mac is a command backslash. Another useful thing, and I will switch to another file here, means that you can switch to like an outline similar to what you have in Illustrator as well. Something like this. So this is done by a shortcut in Mac is Command Y and in PC is Control Shift 3. This is super useful to check really what you're doing. You can keep working on it. This is, and you can find it, of course, as well here in the view menu, Outlines. So another useful thing is uh, the frame outlines. So the frame outlines, if I'm hovering over all of these components over here, you can see that they have a bonding box, they have an outline. So what I have here in the view menu is something called frame outlines. And this is showing you always the outline of the thing. This is not part of the component or anything, just a line that Figma puts there. Okay, now we can start with the fun stuff. The first thing I want to show is smart selection. Maybe you know about it, but it's uh, worth mentioning in detail. So smart selection is this way of distributing elements together and setting up their distances in between. If I select these things, you can see there's some little controls here. This is showing me that I have a smart selection going on. Smart selection is not something that you have to activate. It's something that just happens automatically when things are together. So if I have these elements a little bit uh, not in order, you see what I have here is some controls to have them horizontally stacked. So when I click this, it automatically makes the distance between them the same. Vertically, they are not aligned, but this I can do it here, no problem. Now I have the option to change the spacing and do all of these things, not only with the mouse here, you see the number, but also here. Here I have this little icon that also allows me to change with the mouse or just to write here eight or zero, no problem. One thing that I can do as well with this, I'm gonna change the names here, is to move things around. So you see, this makes it super easy to just move things around. I can even, what is more advanced, I can click on the little dot in between, in, in the middle, and I can even resize one of them, and the other ones will move accordingly. So I don't have to move one and then move the other ones, etc. So that's pretty useful. And like I said, even if you have a little bit of a mistake here, when I select them, I will have this little icon again to click on it and it will fix it. So this works with everything. If I create here now a few rectangles, see, I didn't do anything special to these rectangles, but if I select them all, this icon will appear and then I have this control. Then I can do everything I want and this is really making it easier. So this works as well with metrics. So with, you know, a lot of elements in a, in a grid. So I'm going to find here some elements that kind of look like, uh, yeah, these icons over here. Because they have some similar spacing, it's already showing me the controls to change the distances because it was already organized. But if I move them a little bit and they are not like super perfect, the icon will appear and then I can set it up. I can write here eight and eight and finish. And again, I can change here the order, no problem. Just select them all and move them around. What I can also really have a lot of power with is that I can duplicate some of them. So for example, this I here, I can select in the middle, control D or command D, and you see we'll create another one and move the ones uh, afterwards. And then I can keep reorganizing. So the same thing works for deleting. So if I duplicate a few of them, I can also say, you know what, actually this one, I don't need it. You can just delete with your keyboard and it will be deleted and the rest come up. So this is really amazing control. So the next tip is about images. In Figma, putting images on different components or different elements is quite easy. This is a circle and the fill of the image is here. You can see it, fill, image. 
and this is the image that we have here. In order to change this image, the fastest or the easiest way is obviously clicking here, choose image, then you can go to your finder and then change a different image. You have here all sorts of controls about like, is it fill, is it fit, is it uh, cropped in some way, etc. You have here on the top the, the cropping controls as well. So another cool, easy way to bring in images into your designs is uh, simply by dragging and dropping from your finder or your browser. You can uh, click and make sure that you have the image selected. Uh, you can see here in the field that there is an image as a field. So it is as simple as opening your, your browser, your finder or whatever, and just drag and drop in. If I want this one, I just drag and drop it exactly here. Don't drop it into the image itself. Just drop it into the field here on the right. And you see, it changes automatically. Super cool. And then another even better way, also when you want to bring multiple images, is when you go here to the shape tool, there is an option called place image, which allows me to select from your finder many images at the same time. You select all of these. Let's see how many I need. Five. Okay, so I'm going to select these ones over here. I select five images and just click open here. And you will see my cursor will change to a little indicator that I have selected five images. And I can click anywhere in the canvas, but I can also click directly on objects like these ones, one by one. You see? And I just fill each of them with all the images that I selected. Super easy, super fast. So speaking of fills, remember the images are basically a fill property of an object. And you can see here that this is the image, but every time you see in the properties a little plus icon, it means you can add more things. So I can add more fills, or in the bottom here, I can add more strokes. So I can add something on top of that image. As you see here, automatically there is a linear gradient that got added on top of the image. I can add something else on top. I can add a little bit of uh, you know, red, multiply, and solid. And obviously, all of these guys here, you can reorganize them. There you go. So one cool thing, I'm going to show you that you can copy the properties of something into something else. So if I want exactly this image, not only the image, but also all of the other fields and the other properties, I can right click on it and say, copy properties, which is also command uh, option C. If I do this and I go to any other image, I will be able to say paste properties and it pastes exactly the same. So this works as well with text, with transparency, anything you want. And it doesn't matter what size the object is. And I can see again here, paste the properties and it applies. So that's really handy sometimes. So this is probably a good moment to show you something which is the overwrite. All of these changes that I have on these instances in Figma, they are obviously overwrites. And any time that I want to reset this instance to the original, I can always right click and say reset instance. And so you see, it will go back to exactly how the master component is. But sometimes I only want to reset some things. You know, if I undo here, I want to maybe reset only this text. So I can make sure that I click on the on the text. You know, you, you can always click through by multiple clicking or by select layer. If I'm only right clicking on this and saying reset instance, it will only reset this text. Or if I only reset the image, it will be the same. Some other things that I can do, you know, let, let's say, for example, I change the background of this and I even make it having a stroke with some radius. Now, that's a lot of changes. Obviously, by the way, if I change in the master more component, uh, something else like saying, you know what, this text is going to be a lot smaller and this caption is going to be in the bottom, this keeps being alive. You know, all of this is going through except the things that I overwrite. I'll put this back how it was. It was a little bit ugly. If I only want to reset the fill, what I can do is here, this little icon next to the instance is going to show me all of the things that I changed. So you see, reset overrides will reset everything as we did before, but I have here the option to reset only the things that I want. So obviously the ones that are active are the ones that I changed. If I say I want the stroke to be as the master component, I click here and you see that's as it was. If I want to change the radius, sometimes radios and other things are under others and I click here and I will change that. And if I reset the field, then it will be like the original. And if I reset only this image, then I will have the original image. So that's super handy. 